Right Honourable Winston uh, Mr Speaker, as Parliament draws to a close, uh, New Zealand First wishes to express our thanks to you and your staff. Uh, we may not always agree, Mr Speaker, but we've enjoyed the calm and the humour you have brought to the House, and we must also thank the Honourable Adrian Rufi for having served in the Speaker's role for the majority of this year and bringing a certain independence and professionalism that uh, could be observed as being widely respected by parliamentarians. Yeah, yeah. To the cleaners, caterers, security staff, drivers, library and Hansard staff, to the real workers, as well as to the many office staff in the precinct, we thank you for your exemplary service. This building would not function without you and wish you a happy and safe festive season. We must also acknowledge all of the first responders and essential services, our policemen and women, firefighters, paramedics, doctors, nurses, corrections officers and all those other frontline professionals and volunteers trying to keep our country safe and running this year. We all thank you and also a special message of gratitude to those who cannot go on holiday, cannot have a break, uh, earn essential services right over the Christmas and pay some thought and remember them when you're having your holiday. To my colleagues in New Zealand First, our caucus has come together quickly and well, and so thanks for your support and excellent work to begin the term alongside all of our parliamentary and ministerial staff and alongside our coalition colleagues. Mind you, we got our Christmas present on the 14th of October. That was election day. A lot of people couldn't read the polls, but it was the 14th of October. And we had a team that went out, Cinderella rise and marginalised, despite everything that they say at the moment, uh, maybe my eyesight is failing me, but I couldn't see those media people at those meetings we were having, but they tell me they were there. Uh, the reality is that uh, politics is about reporting every angle, every side. And one of the most amazing things about politics, where it be on the far left, the far right, right around the world, is that numbers and packed halls usually mean something. It means potential market share, but it didn't happen. And I just want to remind those who are congratulating the media today to have a good look at the details of the provincial, uh, the, uh, journalism interest uh, fund. Have a look at what its terms were and have a look at the clause that says if you don't obey this, pay the money back. It's all there, clear as daylight. And I hope we never see that again in our country because uh, the fourth estate is critical to a uh, sound democracy. And I hope they go and we have a great Christmas time reflecting on, upon that and enjoying it while they are uh, before they come back next year. I do thank my uh, party members around the country who worked so hard to bring about the result. And I also want to uh, reciprocate the words that David Seymour has expressed, and I'm sure so would uh, Mr Luxon do if he was here as well, uh, that we have put together, I think, a very sound coalition government that can go forward. And the fact is, if we all agreed with each other, we would not be in our different parties. That's the essence of it. We all agreed and had consensus we wouldn't be in different parties. We've all got something to contribute. And what we've got to do is rebuild a country that was in a very short space of time rapidly destroyed. Please don't talk about the Labor government of 2017. I can recall just before 1 October 2017, Talbot Mills poll came out and they were on 20 per cent. We had risen to 19 per cent and we thought, good heavens, this is bad timing for us. There's going to be a collapse in the Labour Party, and there was. And Jacinda Ardern got chosen on the 1st of uh, August. And 54 days later, she becomes the Prime Minister because we are not biased and we're fair. We give people a fair go and give them a break. But the reality is they went and now say that that was them. No, it wasn't. There was a handbrake at the time. Remember light rail? It started off at 1.9, then 8 billion, then 14 to 16 billion, and then 29 billion. And some parties stopped it because we didn't think it was ever feasible in the first place. And here we go. We've got program after program. But look at their advertising in 2020. Everything we did was in their campaign advertising. I'm reminding you about that because that's the reason why they're going to be in the wilderness a long, long time. And I'll tell you what their problem is now is they haven't got a leader. And it showed in the lack of intensity and the repetitiveness of the attack today. With the greatest respect, that's not the Labour Party I once studied. And if they've got to make a change, then the best thing they can do is start remembering who they are meant to represent. For in the end, it's the numbers that matter. 
Oh, here we go, the tobacco. This is the good outfit, you see, that we're happily changing the tobacco rules so that in 2011, 2011 to 2000 and to now, they have taken 24 billion off these users, the cigarette smokers and what have you. And of those, one third of Maori, so $8 billion have been taken off Maori. Are you the Treaty of Waitangi Tribunal about that? No. That's more than all the Waitangi settlements all put together because of their wokish signalling to the Maori people. Education will change that. As a man, famous man called Paul Maori, the first minister, Maori minister of, Maori, uh, of uh, health, said all those years ago, education and training changes that, not their imposition of woke taxes. Eight billion off Maori. And they're not too happy now, are they, when they're out this side there throwing flags around and saying what they should be doing. If we want to change Maori, give Maori a chance to freedom and education and information to make the changes themselves. But back to the... Beg your pardon? Honour the treaty. Oh, honour the treaty. Really, which treaty are you talking about? Which treaty are you talking about? Are you talking about the one that you are writing every day because you don't know anything about the history of this country? Or the one that great... Oh, not more than me. No, no, he won't. Excuse me, I was there a long time before you were. Right there, right there, with, no, right there, right there, right there with Fenner Cooper when you weren't. Right there when it, all these great causes, when Kohonga Royal was started, when you weren't. I can sit here all, speak to you all day about things I've done, and all we've seen from people like you is noise, noise, noise. All talk. All hooey and no dewey. We're not having that going forward, and I hope that member goes home and fixes Christmas time on the fact that there were people in the past Maori world with far more knowledge, far more intelligence, and far more integrity, and far more respect than this person shouting out today. Have you ever seen a Maori in the Marae behave like that? Have you ever seen a Maori, male or female, in the Marae behaving like that? Uh-uh, no you don't. Here we come, this new version, this new version of Maori behaviour. They come in here, not prepared to hear the other side of the story, and let me ask you this one question. What on earth have you ever done for Maori? Any of you? Give me the list. I can tell you what, I could put it on the back, I could put it on the back of a stamp with a carbonous pencil, there'd be room left over. That's what you've done for Maori. In our case, we've done it, we've done it and we've been it. And we're proud of it. But uh, as Shane Jones would say, the crewman never says how sweet it is, so I'm not gonna go on boasting about it. All right, but let me tell you, I know what's happened here. Out in the Maori world, using the radicalization of a few elite, people who know nothing about the Maori world really, and in this case, and in this case to Waipo Nama, half of the mining in the South Island is on their chest right now. The Greenstone's all there, huge, almost pulling the neck down. Because if they were real, you wouldn't need to wear that, would you? All imagery, all show. No action. Can I just say that uh, this time over Christmas, there is going to, be, uh, going to be a lot of people around the barbecue highly relieved that there's a change of government. I feel it. I see it. You can see it in their, you can see it in their eyes when you walk down the street. They're saying they're so pleased that there was a change of government. If you, need to, if you need to read the room and watch people, there's a new breath of relief and fresh confidence. And our job is to take that on to rebuilding the country that we once were with the principles that we once had, but with the policies that we understand that it's sound common sense and sound commercial policies that put a businessman and woman alongside a businessman and woman's worker and their staff, and they're both of equal value. They're critical. We understand that. We're not here as a party just arguing one side of the story. We want everybody to realise our future is best as a country going forward together. In a country that has always been known and was known at the time of the Treaty of Waitangi as New Zealand. None of the chiefs. Listen up, he says I was there. No, but my, uh, but my, but my, but my chiefly ancestor was, but my chiefly ancestor was, and he's a whole lot more brighter than you. <laughs> he's a genius compared to you. And I, uh, <coughs> and I, and I respect this ancestor, 
and I respect all those chiefs back there who knew what they're doing. And not one in the whole breadth of the country ever called the country Aotearoa. Have a happy Christmas.